individual throttle bodies. You either want them or you've already got them. Nothing makes that brah, 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 brah noise in quite the same way. But there's a problem. Lots and lots of problems. The cost. So let's look at what they are, why you want them, and how you too can have some brap 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 in your life, the less of the Queen's currency, and what you need to think about when you're picking and fitting a set. ITBs, more brap, less pounds, go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the garage. Individual throttle bodies, ITBs, one choke per cylinder. So what are they? Well, the same as a normal throttle body for every day, vanilla road car. But instead of having to share, each cylinder gets one of their own. So what does it do? Well, primarily, it shortens the different distance between the engine and the throttle body and the throttle plate. Now what that does, primarily, this is what they do, is improve throttle, respo throttle response. They do a few other things as well, but hang on, let me go get something. So, in a normal intake, engine goes here, the throttle body all the way up here is miles away from a normal engine. You've got the holes here, you've got the intake runners going all the way around, and then you've got a plenum in here. So, why do um, manufacturers put these on? Well, lots of reasons. So, normal car reasons. Noise, efficiency, emissions, packaging, and mainly cost. So, all of this volume here, all these runners and this plenum, is all at intake pressure. So at low throttle running, it's at vacuum. And at wide open throttle, <laughs> hopefully, it's all at atmospheric. And that means that when you mash the accelerator pedal and that goes open, all of this volume has to come up to atmospheric pressure before the engine sees any of it. And that gives a dead feeling to the throttle. You blip the throttle and blah, blah, nothing much happens. That's bad. Now, some are better than others. So, this is off a Vauxhall engine. Yeah, yeah. I've seen worse, but it's not great. Um, others can be, re can be much better. The, the ones off VTEC Hondas are very good. Um, but there's always compromises. Because, uh, you know, road cars have to, laws, emissions, that kind of thing. Yeah, all the really rubbish thing we don't want to date. We don't want to deal with. So, let's get rid of that. And back to what we want to talk about. So, throttle bodies close to the engine. So, you've got maybe four inches. There's an intake manifold there, but it's a lot smaller unit. So the throttle bodies, you can position them exactly where you want. So the throttle response is a lot better, but there's no real compromise. So there's there's a reason why 99% of naturally aspirated race cars use throttle bodies one choke per cylinder. And if they don't, it's because the rules mandate them to have a single throttle body because they've got to have a restrictor place. So they've got no choice, regulations. So what you, everyone wants to know is, will they get you more power? Well, yeah, yeah that's a different, difficult question. So if the standard inlet is really restrictive, yeah, they'll give you, they'll give you some extra flow, but probably only at the top of the rev range where that manifold became a restriction. What they will do is work much better with a different package. So aggressive cams where you've got a lot of overlap, these will work a lot better because one cylinder isn't affecting another one. And ported heads gives you the chance to go bigger so you can have more flow through the head as well. 
So, yeah, they will make more power. They've got more power potential. But if you just throw them on a standard car and make the wrong decisions, then you're just going to have a car that's a pig to drive in traffic for a couple of extra horsepower at the top. <laughs> but the noise, you always have the noise. <laughs> so design choices. What do you buy and where do you put it? So standard inlets are compromised. They have to be. There's, there's too many things going on for an, an OEM to not have them compromised in some way. Well, throttle bodies are all about being able to do away with those compromises so you can put exactly what you want where you want it to optimise for your requirements. So if it's high revs power or low end torque, you can have a big effect on those. So, diameter. Yeah, well, that's a tricky one, this. So, <laughs> I am... I am what I am, which is a which is a man, and you know, bigger, bigger is better, and much too big is the best. That's that's the rules. So so there's some truth to that. The bigger the diameter, the bigger the hole, the less restriction there is between the atmosphere and the engine. But the bigger the diameter, the slower the airspeed, especially at low running, and you need airspeed in some cases as much as you need flow. You need airspeed to tur for turbulent flow. You need to mix the air and the petrol. You need airspeed to give momentum to the body of air going in so you still have some movement even when the valve shuts. So it, it's, it's a balancing act. So you want to go small enough to keep airspeeds high but big enough not to, to keep airspeeds high at, 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 at a slow running but big enough so you're not going to have any flow restrictions. Yeah, there's another point. When you get to bigger diameters, you get less accuracy at low throttle angles. So you go from idle to maybe a 10% of the air that the, the engine can handle in only a couple of degrees on the, on the butterfly. Whereas if you have a much more narrow, if you have a smaller diameter um, choke, you can you get a lot more uh, sensitivity around the bottom end of the throttle. So, yeah, okay, bigger diameter, especially for your engine, if you're at the high side, driving Monday morning traffic, creeping forward is going to be a nightmare. But as with everything, there's a rule of thumb. So for diameter, roughly speaking, you, you want to be about a millimetre of diameter per horsepower for that cylinder. So, yeah, 40 mil, about 35 to 40 horsepower per cylinder, 50 mil for... 55 to 60 horsepower per cylinder and possibly beyond that as well so <laughs> that gives you an idea of where about where you want to pitch it so the next thing is um, where do you want them do you have them really close to the engine do you have them far away how far away do you get the butterfly from the engine well we've talked about wanting to have the better throttle response that you get from having a smaller volume of air between the engine and the butterfly so you don't want them too far away but you need the butterfly to produce some turbulence because even at wide, wide open throttle, there's still a restriction in there. And that restriction gives you some turbulence, some roll in the air. And that mixes the fuel in the air, which is what you want. And again, it's one or the other really, rule of thumb. You want it further higher, further away for um, high revs applications and closer to optimise for lower revs applications. So, you're going you're gonna to hear this a few times. There's a pattern here. These aren't going to be all things to all men. The throttle bodies for a 2.0-litre out-and-out race car are not the throttle bodies for a 2.0-litre fast road car. Two different things. Now, but the real thing that is worth talking about is the injector positioning and how far away they are from the engine. And seeing as it's all pretty much set up here, we'll move on to injectors. So, injector positioning. Most throttle bodies you'll buy are set up like this. Throttle spindle, then the, throttle, then the um, injector body coming in, 
straight after that so you can see it Let's see if you can position it there so you can see I need to clean these up oh, it's, it's dirty throttles David so you can see the injector port there right on the back of the throttle spindle and throttle butterfly so what that does is as soon as you've got that turbulent air coming off the, the butterfly it squirts the fuel straight in so you get that ideal mixing of, uh, of, of air and fuel throughout so you want them quite close to the butterfly we don't have a choice here that works fine for me but where how far away from the engine do you put this assembly well again modern engines have got the fuel injectors in the port squirting right onto the back of the uh, the inlet head the inlet valve <laughs> some engines have got direct injection straight into the port so but these are mainly done for emissions direct injection you can make a case for but in having the injectors in the head in the port is mainly for emissions it's mainly for cold startups etc so it's not really what we want the other end of the the other end of the scale is if you're screaming at 9000 revs you've got to have the time between the injector and the fuel going into the engine for that turbulent for the air and the fuel to mix so you want it further away if it's slow running you want it closer because you don't want to give it time at slow airflow for that fuel to drop out of the mixture so again it's it, it's it's one or the other it's optimization but it can't be all things to all men so one way around that is to have two sets of injectors one for slow running and one for for high running so this what these came with these had an extra set of injectors here in the airbox squirting in so you get that on motorbikes famously you saw it in um in the rs500 cosworths with the yb engine uh, you, it comes up quite often, it's, it's quite a simple solution, yeah, even my Speedwino supports it, but it complicates matters, and it, it, it's, we're talking marginals, marginal improvements here in, in my world anyway. So, but we're going to stick to the idea we've got one set of injectors, so really it's just a decision of where we place these, do we place them close to the head or far away? So, uh, governed by the injectors, we're going to say if you're optimizing for lower revs, say the two to five thousand, a road car type of application, you're going to want them quite close. Um, if you're at, if you're talking about an out and out screamer, you're going to want them as far away from the engine as you can get. Now, that leads us on to a really interesting subject. So, you don't just fit these to an engine like this, they have an inlet manifold. Now, the overall length of that is quite important. I'm only going to say, I'm going to say two words, because I've talked enough already. Uh, pulse tuning. We'll get on to it. We'll get on to it, because you can play with the inlet length between atmosphere and engine and inlet valve completely separate from where you put these. And that's done by these inlet trumpets, Venturi stacks, um, whatever you want to call them, but you can change these to give you a different inlet tract. <laughs> we'll cover that in another video because that's that will get into that because that will affect what I'm going to be doing. But generally speaking, if it's high revs, you want a short inlet tract or a shorter inlet tract. If it's low revs, you want a really long one. Uh, <laughs> another rule of thumb lots of rule of thumbs here um, but things like pulse tuning actually the way to get it right there's lots of theory it's to get it onto a dyno but that's a real quick skim over so again you can optimize them but they're not going to be all things to all men but if you're putting these on a car we don't want it to be it's a road car it's a fun car it's a track car it's a competition car you know what you want to optimize it for and that's the real power of these can you get more power than boy well, yes you absolutely can but it's not just plug and play unless you just want the noise of course well in which case <laughs> go for it boy because they're going to sound incredible right 
buying them. So this is comes to the real crux of the video. I said more brap, less money. Well, so you've got a choice. You can get a fully skookum set of throttle bodies. And look at this, absolutely brand new. Okay, it's dates it. Oh, 2021. Won't that be nice? Oh, tw you know, 2020 is on its way out when you get the new Demon Tweak catalogue. Ah, look, it's just, oh man, this, this should be outlawed. It's like, this, it's like giving a drug addict a catalogue for drugs. It's just incredible. Anyway, so, turning to there. <laughs> throttle body page this is omex which is by no means the most expensive um you know these are standard butterfly throttle bodies let's just have a quickly quick look looky looky so we'll ignore the throttle the inlet manifold for now but throttle bodies four cylinder engine at the 444 pounds oh out injectors yeah we need some of them as well so it's a 83 oh, we can go for a bosch yeah, yeah. just it's only 50 quid for uh, suitable for my car, so yeah, it's just 200 quid of injectors, throttle position sensor. What 65 pounds <gasps> fuel? <b> <gasps> oh, oh. It reminds me why I don't shop at Demon Tweaks. So you're talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And seeing as you've got to have an ECU and all these other bits and bobs to you know, there's lots of other things involved. You want to save money where you can. So these, I got off Fleabay for the princely sum of £40. These are off a Honda Fireblade. And virtually every sports bike, super bike, of the last, 20, well, the last 10 years, 15 years, has come with throttle bodies. And before that, they came with individual carbs, which are pretty much just as good. Uh, different way of cracking a nut. But these were £40. These were £40 with a throttle position sensor and the wiring tails, with injectors. Uh, OK, yeah, I can sort that out, but with the wiring for them already in. With a fuel rail. And importantly, with these little couplers, these get expensive. So... If you get on eBay, you'll be able to pick something in, up day in, day out, be it from an R1, a Ninja, um, any of the sports bikes, for 50, 40, 50 quid, 60 quid maybe. Um, if you want off, off a really recent one, you can get like £100, but you bear in mind some of them now are coming with drive-by-wire throttle because they've all got all the electronics on them, the, the anti-wheelie and the and all the traction control, so a lot of that's fly-by-wire throttle, so these, I think, were a 2004 model. <laughs> Rule of thumb, you probably, if you just want to know, you, you don't know what the diameter is, you don't know any of that stuff, if you get ones that produce, from a, from a bike that produces about the same horsepower as you want to produce, you're not far off. Airflow is horsepower. That's really a thing. You can always mod them for different injectors. That's relatively simple, but you don't want to get into boring them out. So if your bike does 170 horsepower, as the Fireblade did, then these will do 170 horsepower on a bike. It, it, you know, rule of thumb here, guys. Now, these are, roughly speaking, about 40 mil in diameter at the end here. Yeah, I could probably measure that more accurate. 40, yeah, 40 mil. So that gives, that's good for about 160 horsepower. Rule of thumb. We know they come off a fire blade, 170. And yeah, I'm gonna fit these to the mini. So I've got a few bits and bobs to do. I've got a inlet manifold to work up. I've got to work out the flow rate, the injectors. And then I've got to wire them all in. And, uh, and and tune it all. So that's the kind of the rough guide to throttle bodies, uh, why they work, how they work, and 
they're great. Oh, they make a great noise. You know you want them. Or a turbo. Mm, probably don't need both. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Um, I say these are going to end up on the mini. Um, we're going to do a bit, a few videos now next about fitting them and getting them onto the car um, and getting the car running. So if you want to see any of that, then please make sure you subscribe. If you found this interesting at all, or if you haven't found it interesting, just press the like button. Why not? Why not? It's nice to be nice. It's Christmas. So that's it from me for the moment. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. And um, speak to you soon. Cheers.